expositors Bible commentary on Hebrews 7, 5 to 7. And those indeed of the sons of Levi who receive the priest's office have commandment in the law to collect a tenth from the people, that is, from their brethren, although these are descended from Abraham. But the one whose genealogy is not traced from collected from them collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed the one who had the promises. But without any dispute, the lesser is blessed by the greater. 5 to 6a. Here the meaning of the payment of the tithe is spelled out. Not only was such a payment widely customary, but the law required it to be made. The writer speaks of the descendants of Levi who became priests as collecting a tenth from the people. In the law, it was provided that the people were to pay tithes to the Levites. But the Levites similarly paid tithes to the priests. So it could be well said, or could well be said, that the people paid tithes to the priests. In any case, there seems to be some evidence that in the first century, the priests carried out the whole tithing operation. And the writer may be glancing at a contemporary custom. This tithing was done by divine appointment. The writer is strongly interested in the law, which he mentions 14 times. The word can denote law in general or a principle according to which one acts. But it is specially used for the law of Moses here, which is the meaning here. The law required tithes to be taken to people of whom the priests were brothers. There is a sense in which the priests had no inherent superiority. They were kin to those who gave tithes to them. They owed their ability to collect tithes to the provision made in the law and not to any natural superiority. But with Melchizedek, it was different. He did not trace his descent from Levi. Melchizedek was not simply one among a host of brothers. He was a solitary figure of grandeur. And he exacted tithes not simply from his brothers, but from Abraham. His greatness stands out. Not only did Melchizedek exact tithes from Abraham, but he also blessed him. The giving of a blessing was a significant act in antiquity. As Calvin puts it, blessing is a solemn act of prayer with which one who is endowed with some outstanding public honor commends to God private individuals who are under his care. There are senses of the word bless in which men bless God, i.e. praise him, or in which an inferior prays that God will prosper some superior. But the word is not used in such a way here. It is rather the official pronouncement given by an authorized person who that happens, when that happens, there is no denying that it proceeds from a superior. The lesser is blessed by the greater. In the Genesis account, Melchizedek makes no claim, no claims, nor does Abraham concede anything in words. But the patriarch gave up a tenth of the spoils, this implicitly acknowledging the superior place of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek proceeded to bless Abram, accepting the implied superiority. The situation is clear to all parties. There is no need to spell it out. And the author is simply drawing attention to what the narrative clearly implies when he breaks out, brings out the superior status of Melchizedek. Even when Abraham is seen as the one who had the promises, Melchizedek is superior. Now we have Hebrews 7, 8. In this case, mortal men receive tithes, but in that case, one receives of them of whom it is witness that he lives on. Bible study manuals. Again, the point is made that mortal men receive tithes. Those mortal and sinful men of the Aaronic priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, receive tithes from their people, Israel, under their Mosaic law. And those men of the Levitical priesthood must make sacrifices for their own sin. But Hebrews 7, 8 states that in, in that case, in the sense of the case of Melchizedek, the one meaning that he, Melchizedek, receives tithes of whom it is witnessed that he lives on. This is so because he, Melchizedek, who is Christ, equals Christ, lives on. In other words, he is eternal. And he is the only one 
who is eternal, without beginning of days or end of life. For he is the priest who is. Hebrews 7, 3, without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, who is God, not just like him as a typology, like some contend. He's, he is the Son of God, Melchizedek, who is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ, who is God. He remains a priest forever. Doesn't mean that uh, the priesthood is forever. The one who is a priest of the priesthood of Melchizedek is a priest forever. And there's only one who's a priest forever. That's Christ. They are one and the same, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, being the pre-incarnate Son of God, appearing in a perfect humanity. The perfect humanity is the King and Priest of Salem, Jerusalem. For according to Hebrews 7, 2, And Abraham gave him, Melchizedek, a tenth of everything. First his, Melchizedek's name, means King of Righteousness. Then also, King of Salem means King of Peace. Both titles also attributed to Jesus Christ in his perfect humanity on into the first century and forever. Well, expositors have something to say about this. In this case, men, more than men receive tithes, but in that case, one receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives on. So expositors, eight, he's looking at the NIV, says it is a trifle free in, in this verse. I, I uh, typed in uh, NASB. Rather, it reads, and here mortal dying men receive tithes, but there, one of whom it is testified that he lives. Those who receive tithes are not merely capable of dying, but they do die. They are seen to die. The present tense of both dying and receiving, coupled with the here and at the beginning, may be held to indicate that the temple system was still in operation at the time the words were written. Thus, they support a date before AD 70 for the writing of the epistle. There puts Melchizedek in strong contrast to the Aaronic priests. He is remote from this scene. The writer does not say that Melchizedek lives on, but that the testimony about him is that he lives. I say differently. Once more, he is emphasizing the silences of Scripture to bring out his point. Scripture records nothing about the death of Melchizedek. This must be borne in mind when estimating the significance of the incident and the way the priest-king prefigures Christ. Not so. Correction. Melchizedek equals Christ lives on, i.e. he is eternal. And he is, it already says that. 7 3 and he is the only one who is eternal without beginning of days or end of life for he is the priest who is hebrews 7 3 without father or mother without genealogy if you don't have genealogy you're not a priest anymore that's what it says in the old testament without genealogy without beginning of days or end of life like the son of god who is god he remains a priest forever they are one and the same the Son of God, Jesus Christ, being the pre-incarnate Son of God, appearing in perfect humanity, and the King and Priest of Salem. For according to Hebrews 7, 2, and Abraham gave him, Melchizedek, a tenth of everything. First, his, Melchiz his Melchizedek's name, means King of Righteousness. Then also, King of Salem, means King of Peace. Both titles also attributed to Jesus Christ in his perfect humanity. Now, I looked it up when it says you have no record as a priest, like those priests that came out of the Babylonian captivity when they had no actual paperwork or record of their priesthood, they're no longer considered priests. So how could Melchizedek have no record? Nobody seems to know that, that criticized this idea that Melchizedek is not Jesus Christ in pre-incarnate uh, uh, Humanity, perfect humanity. In any case, <clears throat> Hebrews 7, 9, and so to speak, through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes, we're just reviewing, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. One might even say that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham. 
And because when Ab Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestor. Now, Bible study manuals says, so in contrast to the Levitical priesthood who received tithes from the people of Israel, establishing their priesthood over the people of Israel, albeit each priest had to sacrifice for his own sins, and so in no way superior to the people of Israel, figuratively speaking. Levi, at the time of Abraham, being a then future descendant of Abraham, was still in a sense in the body, the genes of Abraham, who, who was a future descendant of Abraham's, and thus in that ancient moment, when Abraham paid the tithes to Melchizedek, it included Abraham's descendants, who also are attributed to having paid those tithes to Melchizedek, establishing the absolute superiority of the priesthood of Melchizedek to, Le to the Levitical priesthood, as well as the great patriarch father Abraham, so that the Melchizedek priesthood would qualify to be a perfect, perfect, forever priesthood for Jesus Christ to be a high priest of otherwise. He couldn't be a high priest of that. He was too superior, of which he, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was the only one who could qualify. Hence, the priesthood of Melchizedek, let me see if I can close this out, extra spaces here, could only have one high priest, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who alone was qualified to be of the priesthood of Melchizedek, for he, Hebrews 7.3 says, Melchizedek is without father or mother, literally, without genealogy, literally, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, who is God, he remains a priest forever. Why they don't get that, I don't know, but there's so many these commentaries, even expositors and Bible knowledge commentary, don't quite get that. So, in ancient times, the priest of Melchizedek was the pre-incarnate Jesus. He could not be a mortal human being who has a sin nature, and who died in ancient times at the end of his reign as priest and king of Salem. But he was the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who appeared to Abraham and all those in ancient times as the priest and king of Salem, as he appeared then to Abraham and others to complete his mission, for that was fully within the capacity of the Son of God, who is creator and God. Recall the angel of the Lord, pre-incarnate Jesus. Adam and Eve was taught by who? pre-incarnate Jesus, the Son of God, in the Garden of Eden. So, expositors' commentary on Hebrews 7, 9 to 10. <clears throat> Let's see if they have this right. One might even say, translates an unusual expression not found elsewhere in the New Testament or Septuagint that serves to introduce a statement which may startle a reader <clears throat> and which requires to be guarded from misinterpretation. The characteristic of Levi and his descendants was not that of paying, but of receiving tithes. Of course, there is something of the in a manner of speaking about Levi's collecting of tithes, just as there is in his paying of them, because he collects them not in person, but through his descendants. But the startling thing is that he should be said to pay tithes at all. When Abraham paid Melchizedek a tithe, the author sees Levi as paying for it. <coughs> for Levi was still in the body of his ancestor. This is the way of speaking we find here and there in the Bible when the ancestor includes the descendants as well. So it was said to Rebecca, not two children, but two nations are in your womb. Again, Paul can say in Adam, all die. And Levi was thus included in the payment of the tithe. And of course, all the priests who descended from him and whom the Hebrew esteemed so highly. The author wants his readers to be in no doubt about the superiority of Christ to any priests and sees the mysterious figure of Melchizedek as powerfully illustrating this superiority. Now I have a commentary, an expositor's commentary, a little bit of a, a problem, an objection to what he said or wrote. There is here no doubt about the superiority of Christ to any other priest. Melchizedek is clearly as Hebrews 7, 3 stipulates, which is, Melchizedek is without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, who is 
God, he remains a priest forever. So in ancient times, the priest of Melchizedek was a 